Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this class where we discuss about wines of the world. So today we are going to discuss wine basics, which is uh, we will talk about uh, red wines, white wine, rosé wines, as well as sparkling wines a little bit. Of course, I'll make a separate section for sparkling wines, aromatized wines and fortified wines, which would come in the later section. So they'll be more focused towards red, white and rosé and uh, the basics of what is a wine, how it is made and what are the things which affect uh, winemaking. Okay, so I'm going to do this as one long uh, lecture. If you get tired in the middle and you want to take a break, you can always stop this video, take a break, come back to the video whenever you want and uh, go through the rest of the video and as always if you have any questions we can always discuss this when we meet each other uh, virtually or face to face all right so let's go ahead so the first thing you know when we when we think about wines we have so many perspectives about wine and we've heard lots of stories about wine what is wine what is it made of in fact a few days ago it was christmas and I went to somebody's house and I was offered a glass of what was termed as being wine. And uh, then uh, they, they asked me for my uh, feedback. And the reason was because they knew that I teach about wines and I have uh, an oenology background. And then when I asked them about the ingredients and the making style, I was shocked to hear that they had put uh, raisins and they had put orange uh, juice. They had, in fact, they had also put ginger, crushed ginger to make, to give the wine a spicy flavor. So I realized it was less of a wine and more of a mulled wine, you know, very Christmassy wine. But in their opinion, it was what a regular red wine should be. And so, so again, you know, there's different perspectives about wine. So the first thing what I would do is I'll give you a, a basic idea of what wine is and what wine sh should be. Uh, so I've come up with a definition. Now this definition is my definition, but I believe this one sentence tells you everything which you want to know about what a wine is. This may be different from what you read in your notes or it may be different than what is available on the internet but again you can read my definition and you can see your notes and see whether there are similarities or differences of course if you find any differences we can discuss the same when we see each other so wine is an alcoholic beverage made by natural fermentation of the juice of ripe and freshly gathered grapes according to lo local traditions and practice. Now I have underlined a few of these words and these are the most important words which we need to take care of. The first one is, it is an alcoholic beverage. That means if somebody tells you that I have a non-alcoholic wine, there's no such thing. A wine without alcohol pretty much becomes grape juice. So a wine should always be alcoholic. So that's underlined here. The next thing is, it is made by natural fermentation. By natural fermentation means, we as human beings do not do anything to this. The juice of the fruit is fermented naturally. Nature provides whatever is required for fermentation to happen. We as human beings cannot make wine. You know, somebody made wine for us. We just bring the ingredients together and put them together. And now the juice has to be ripe and freshly gathered grapes. It should be ripe. Uh, that means the, the grapes should be sweet. There should be high sugar content inside it. If there's not enough sugar content, then your... your uh, uh, the, the yeast which is inside the grape juice or which is mixed with the grape juice will not have enough sugar to eat. So if the fermentation happens because there is yeast 
which is introduced to the grape juice and the yeast eats the grape juice the sugar and it produces alcohol so if there is not enough sugar the yeast has nothing to eat and it won't make alcohol so it has to be ripe and the second word is freshly gathered that means the grapes should not be purchased from a supermarket or should not be sitting in the fridge for a week it has to be freshly gathered same day i take the grapes from the vineyard today and i crush the grapes today freshly gathered because we need natural yeast we don't need to go to a bakery and take artif you know yeast from the bakery which we use for making bread and we don't introduce that yeast into our grapes we get naturally occurring yeast so i'll show you where is the natural yeast uh, when we take the grapes and the natural yeast you know if, if we bring it home and then we wash the grapes or we keep it in the fridge all the natural yeast which is all around the grapes will vanish it will get washed off or the more you handle it you touch it your hands will remove the um, natural yeast which is outside the grapes so it has to be freshly gathered so that the yeast is fresh and the last word is according to local traditions and practice so local tradition usually means the tradition which has been followed in local in countries which usually make wines countries like france italy spain portugal and germany these are the common countries which have been making wine for quite a few hundred years of course wine was also made in the ancient world in egypt and other countries but that was lost in in time so now traditionally wine is being made in the modern world it has been made in the last 5 to 700 years in france italy spain portugal and germany you can use other fruits also to make a fermented beverage uh, and then you can if you want to call you can call them black currant wine or plum wine but in reality if you use the word only wine it means it is made from grape juice so again this is a misconception which i wanted to clear okay let's go ahead so uh, not much is known about the history of making wines but i like i told you it has been made for nearly 5000 years in different parts of the world but where it was made in the first time is not clear uh, we found wine remnants in greece and rome and egypt and ancient india as well um but uh, th those styles of making wine has has been lost to time okay so uh, you can go through the 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 history of wines i'll go ahead now wines can be classified into various categories it can be classified by nature how it looks it can be also classified by taste how it tastes it can be classified by the color how it looks and uh, it can be also classified by year by year means which year was it made in and uh, so by nature you can classify wines as still wine sparkling wine fortified or aromatized now what's a still wine still wine basically means your regular red wines white wines or rosé wines these are not you know they're just like water they if you pour them in a glass they stay still so those are called still wines and the opposite of this is called a sparkling wine which is a wine which you pour in a glass and it moves because it's got gas inside it's got bubbles inside so a, a very famous example of sparkling wine is champagne uh, i'm sure you must have seen champagnes uh, in in parties and celebrations or you know if you see formula 1 races the you'll see people opening champagne bottles so those are sparkling wines there's a, there's a third category of wine which are called fortified wines now fortify means to make something stronger so a fortified wine is a wine which has more alcohol inside it so we'll go through this as well and then the last category of wine by nature is called aromatized wine that means a wine with aroma extra aroma or extra smells added into it so when you smell this wine you get the grape smell plus you get other 
smells which come from other things like herbs and spices so i'll i'll discuss these in brief today with you so you can order wines in a restaurant whether you can say can i have a still wine or can i have a fortified wine you can also order wines by taste so you can say can i have a sweet wine or a dry wine or in dry means not sweet so is the opposite of sweet of course there's many other categories in in between semi sweet semi dry medium so there's many other categories uh you can also order wines by color you have red wines which are usually made from red grapes you have white wines which are usually made from white grapes uh usually it can also be made from red grapes i'll discuss this also further and then you have rosé wines which are also called pink wines they are also called blush wines rosé wine is in between a red and a white so we'll see how to make rosé wines as well in the last category of wines you have something called vintage wines or non vintage wines so vintage wines are basically wines which have a particular year written on top so if you see a bottle of wine and it's you know i have a bottle of wine here so if you see a bottle of wine and it says for example this wine says 2013 so that means this wine was i mean it's an empty bottle now so this wine was a 2013 vintage that means it was made in 2013 a non vintage wine on the other hand would have a label but it does not have the year written on top so you see the year is mentioned here in the bottle that's the year mentioned 2013 So if this is not mentioned that means this wine is a non vintage non vintage basically means the wine inside the bottle may be a mix of two or three different years you know blended wines uh is not necessarily a bad thing in fact many producers do that because they want to make a, a special flavor every year the wine tastes different so they want to make a special flavor from different years one year the wine had a stronger flavor another year it was more mild so they blended together to make a standard flavor going ahead now i I've, i've split the wines into few sections and i've given you examples of a few of these and i i will discuss them in future videos or future classes so let's look at the still wine still means not you know like liquid water you have a few categories you have red wines white wine and rosé wines which are still wines then you have something called sparkling which is with the gas wine with carbon dioxide inside this sparkling wine like champagne can be made in four styles one is the champagne method or called method de champenois we will study this and plus there are many other methods method de transfusman method de gazifer Uh, and cuvee close method so we'll focus more on the champagne method because this is one of the most uh, famous then you have aromatized wines wine with extra smells or extra aromas now the, one of the most ex- famous examples of this is vermouth which is here then you have lilet suzette saint raphaël few examples then you have something called fortified wines which are fortified with extra alcohol they are stronger in alcohol so of course you don't drink too much of these wines because you'll get drunk faster now these wines are things like sherry port madeira etc so these are few examples of uh, fortified wines All right going ahead so uh, you can make usually can you can make alcohol from various sources it could be from plants it could be from the fruits of the plants it could be from the seeds of the plants it could be from stems of the plant it could also be from grains of plants so we will uh, go through them quickly uh whenever you get any any kind of uh, fruit or grain you need sugar present inside it because only from sugar we can con- we can make alcohol so we need fruits or grains or other parts of the plant like 
you know sugarcane the stem is, is uh, the stem of sugarcane has sugar inside so we need fruits which have sugar and then we have to ferment it uh, fermentation i'll go through the steps of fermentation it's very simple it is basically a yeast which eats the sugar and produces alcohol and carbon dioxide gas so fermentation has to happen and after you ferment you are you are left with a beverage which is some kind of wine or some kind of beer or some kind of other alcoholic beverage for example okay i'll show you examples in the next slide but for example if you take grapes you ferment the grapes you get wine example if you take wheat or barley you ferment it you get beer let's say you take sugarcane which is a stem of a plant you ferment it you get a beverage um, which is or maybe let's say you take uh, uh, okay let's say sugarcane you take sugarcane you ferment it you get a beverage that alcoholic beverage we don't actually drink but if you distill that beverage you get rum out of it rum is what you know captain jack sparrow likes to drink so whenever we take any fermented beverage we distill it then we get some kind of spirit now spirits are stronger in alcohol a wine may be 5 to 15 percent alcohol or beer is around 5 percent alcohol only but when you distill it distill means you heat it up to separate the water and the alcohol and you only collect the alcohol so it becomes much more stronger that is called the spirit for example from a wine when we distill a wine we get brandy when we distill a beer we can get something called a whiskey let's say you distill a fermented sugarcane juice you will get a rum which is over here so we'll see this in detail so you take the fruits uh, the fruits are made of juice and uh, juice which is sugar plus water this gets fermented so the sugar is eaten by the yeast it produces alcohol and carbon dioxide and of course whenever there's a reaction there is uh, heat being produced so after this you will get regular wines you know like red white rosé wines which are around 8 to 12 8 to 14 percent alcohol uh, uh, if instead of grapes if you take some other fruits like apples you get cider if you take pear you get peri very similar to wines but these use grapes and cider and peri are uh, apple or pears if you take the same wines a, a, a white wine for example and you add gas inside it you put co2 back inside it so you make it gassy you get a sparkling wine example champagne so these wines have gas inside it same alcohol percentage but with gas inside so some people like bubble tastes in the mouth if you take the same wine and you add brandy into it you put extra alcohol you know brandy is like 40 50 percent alcohol if you put a brandy inside it and this wine becomes a fortified wine it becomes a stronger wine so you would have examples of fortified like sherry or port or madeira these are all fortified wines wines with extra alcohol and the same wines if you add some spirit and some flavors inside it not artificial flavors natural flavors like herbs spices seeds fruits uh, stem bark of a tree all these herbs and spices you get an aromatized wine example vermouth i've given you a few brand names of vermouth like Cinzano, Dubonnet, Martini, etc. Holly Pratt. All right, so going ahead, if you take a regular wine and you distill the wine, that means you remove the water separate and the pure alcohol separate, you get a spirit. Now, the spirits are very strong in alcohol, but remember, when it is distilled, it has no color or smell and taste. It's just pure, strong alcohol. But the same spirit, if the spirit is, for example, made of grape, 
it can be made in two categories it could be aged or not aged if you are not aging it it's called pisco which is done in countries like chile peru and bolivia if you age it you get brandy other examples are also cognac and armagnac these are brandies uh, if you flavor the brandy with sugar you get brandy based liqueurs so if you get a brandy which is strong in alcohol you put some sugar syrup it becomes a liqueur and the same product if you are making with other fruits you get you can age them again and then you get fruit brandies like schnapps framboas or kush or poa williams these are made from different kind of fruits or applejack or calvados and then same with grape we have also called pomac brandy or pomis brandy now these are just uh, same grapes which are crushed even more for second time and third time so they are much more stronger because these this juice will have more you know the skin will be crushed the the grape skin is crushed even more the grape seeds are crushed so a lot of oils are released so this becomes a much more stronger flavored alcohol like grappa a mark so similar to brandy but much more stronger in flavor not in alcohol but in flavor strong in flavor i'm going ahead if you are using the same thing with grain instead of fruits you 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 uh, again i will not go too much in detail here because we are discussing wines today but you can germinate the grains so that they they the starch gets converted into sugar and then you mix it that's called malt you know that's a, a, a grain which has sugar inside is called malted grain or toasted grain you mix it with you crush it into a powder mix it with water and that liquid is called wort then you ferment it with some yeast so you get a fermented beverage something like a beer and then you can drink the beer or you can uh, convert the beer into something like a whiskey same thing you can do it with rice uh, you can ferment the rice and you can get a sake but if you distill these alcohols you'll get a spirit the, these spirits can be aged for example you get whiskies which are aged for 3 to up to 21 25 years uh, if you flavor them they become a whiskey based liqueur okay if you take the same spirit and if you don't age it you just add some flavors inside it you get things like gin which are flavored spirits same spirit if you filter it multiple times you'll get things like vodka if you flavor the vodka you get a flavored vodka if you take the same spirit and you just put sugar inside it it becomes a liqueur so these are fruit you know liqueur made from whatever grains over here you also have liqueurs but these ones are first made into whiskey and then added sugar so it's a whiskey based liqueur that's the difference between these two we going ahead of course you can make other products also um so uh, like i told you anything which has sugar any fruits which have sugar except of course citrus fruits that citrus fruit because it has a lot of vitamin c and a lot of acidic uh juices they don't ferment very well but any other kind of fruits even like palm or agave plants or sugarcane can be fermented and then distilled into different products for example sugar can make rum agave can make mezcal or tequila a coconut can make arak or people also call it toddy uh and the same thing if you uh, just filter it multiple times you get vodka so vodka is basically any spirit which is filtered multiple times so that becomes a vodka okay now this is quite important uh, a few terms for wines which you need to know now if you want a break in between like i said you can stop the video take a break and then come back to continue
So the first word which you will always see people using would be vine with a V, V-I-N-E. Now a vine is nothing but any plant which is a creeper, you know, a plant which is, doesn't have a strong stem. So it is on the floor, it grows on the floor. Or if you put a stick or if you tie with a thread, then it will go around the thread. So that's a vine. And a grape plant is a vine plant. That means grape needs support from wooden stems or bamboo sticks. And then we make a net on top so that the plant grows up and then it hangs on the nets. That's a, a vine. So if I'm talking vine, V-I-N-E, I'm talking about the plant. Uh, and a vineyard is the place where you, this plant is growing or the farm where it's growing. So that's called the vineyard, the field where the grapes are growing. Now, the next word is wine, W-I-N-E. It's not given here, but W-I-N-E is this inside the bottle. This is W-I-N-E, wine. V-I-N-E is the plant. So, uh, uh, so a vineyard is the field, a winery, is the factory or the place where you are making the wines. So next, usually these are very close to the vineyard. So this is the factory or the house in which I bring all the grapes and I make wine. Sorry. All right. So the next thing which we, uh, we have to do is called a, a vinification. Now what is vinification? Vinification is basically the process of making a wine. So from the vineyard, when you bring the grapes to the winery, you can uh, convert the grapes into a wine. That's called vinification. Of course, there's one word before this, which is called viticulture, which means the process of growing the grapes. So whatever the farmer does in the field with the grape plant is called viticulture. Whatever the farmer does in the winery to convert the grapes into wines is called vinification. So viticulture and vinification. Now the next word here is vintner. A vintner is nothing but a wine merchant, somebody who makes wine, who sells wine. The next word is oenology or uh, the study of wines. So what this class is an oenology class. So the study of wines. Oino means wine, logy means the study of. Just like uh, biology, study of the body or uh, astrology, study of space or stars. Then we have another word called oenologist, which is an expert in the field of wine. And then you have uh, an oenophil. An oenophil is a lover of wine or a connoisseur of wine. All right, so going ahead. Now we also need to know the factors which affect the quality of wine. Now these factors uh, give flavor to the product which you drink in a restaurant. That actually means that the same wine from different years or let's say the same grape variety from different parts of the world may not taste the same because all these things which are mentioned on this page like location climate soil the variety of grape which has been used the aspect again we'll discuss what is aspect the viticultural practices employed by the farmer the vinification practices employed by the vintner and the year of uh, manufacture, all of this will affect the flavor of grapes, uh, the flavor of the wine, eventually. Therefore, you will see sometimes in restaurants, people would order wines by year. They would say, can I have a Shotomuto Rothschild from 1989? So they remember which years, these people who really enjoy wines, know which year had a good yield or which year had a good uh, flavor. 
So they would order wines based on what year they like. So they'll say, oh, can I have a, which what brand is this? Can I have a benchmark from 2014? So you will, you will, if you have that, you will serve it to them. So you go ahead. So the first one is location. Location means which part of the world this grape was growing in. Now, usually wines are made in, in the zone which is between 30 degrees north to 50 degrees north and 30 degrees south to 50 degrees south latitude. Uh, I'm sure you know the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn and Equator. So usually Equator is in the center of the planet. Then you have Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. These are around 22.5 degrees north and south. If you go slightly south of that and slightly north of that, you have the zone 30 to 50 degrees north or south. This is the best place for grapes to grow so that the summers are not very hot and the winters not very cold. And if you go even further than that north, it's too cold for the grapes. And if you go towards the equator, it gets too hot. So again, not very good for making wines. So that's the location. And again, which part of the location? Are you based in Europe or are you based in the Americas? Will also affect the flavor. Because, you know, the soil will be different. Also remember the climate uh, uh, effects. So, for example, if you're making a wine in Italy, in southern Italy, it will be more warmer compared to making wines in Germany, which is slightly much you know, higher than Italy towards the North Pole. So wines in Germany may taste different than the wines in Italy, even if it's the same grape, even if it's the same continent, because the temperature would change and maybe even the soil will change between both the countries. So, uh, uh, and grape plant, you know, the, the, the wine actually needs a changing temperature it doesn't like constant temperature like on the equator we have constant hot temperature and wet temperature not good for making wines it needs summers to grow by the winters the plant has to sleep that's the time we will uh, cut the grapes and then we will start making uh, the wine in the winery so the plant is sleeping in the winters and then when spring starts after winter is over in spring, new flowers will come out and then new grapes will come out by summers and they'll grow up again. So this plant needs to have, you know, alternate steps of uh, waking up and sleeping, waking up and sleeping. Go ahead. Now, soil is very, very important uh, and different parts of the world have different soil. So where this grape is growing. Imagine you have exactly the same grape variety growing in two opposite parts of the planet. And if the soil is different, the soil gives a lot of nutrition and minerals to the plant. So it also brings a lot of flavor. All these nutrition and minerals brings flavor to the grapes. So uh, if I take a grape plant from France, bring it to Malaysia or India and I grow it there, it will taste different. And usually bad soil is good for uh, grapes, for making wines. Now this is something which we will discuss in our future classes. Or you can actually do a search on why bad soil is good. Why you don't need good soil for making wines. Going ahead. Now there's lots of grape varieties. You know, when you go to the supermarket, you will see lots of varieties of apples or oranges or mangoes same way grapes have a lot of variety maybe in our supermarkets we can see three to four varieties or if you're lucky up to you know seven to eight varieties only but in reality there are around six thousand five hundred varieties of grapes and of course we do not eat all of them and we don't use all of them for making wines Many of them are wild varieties, which humans don't eat. Many of them are varieties which are specific to different parts of the world. 
and then many of them are for human eating with thin skins and more sugar but the ones for making wines are different they are usually more thicker in skin more you know when if you try to eat them they have a lot of the skin is too thick so you chew too much you know a lot of uh, fiber inside it so uh, okay scientific name for grapes is vitis vinifera so this is something to remember there are other varieties also which is called vitis draparia or vitis labrusca but the most common ones for making wine is called vitis vinifera of course out of these so many varieties there are around 20 varieties which are considered as uh, the noble grape varieties or the grapes which are usually used for making wines so that's something which you can again read in your notes or uh, read on the internet and those are the ones which you will see in almost most of the places where you make wines you will find these brands being uh, or these varieties being cultivated go ahead now aspect is something which is very important uh, this is what uh, you wanted to what i wanted to explain to you aspect basically means how much sunlight does your plant get how much rainfall does it get uh, what, do it, what kind of wind it gets is it dry wind is it humid wind is it wind coming from the oceans uh, also depends uh, aspect also means how is the plant growing is it growing on a mountain or on a plain area all these will affect the the growth of the plant which in turn affects the growth of the or the flavor of the grapes for example let's look at this photo there's a sunlight pounding this side of the hill but not enough sunlight coming here so on the same soil in the same part of the world the grapes growing here will have maybe slightly more sugar than the grapes growing here because more sunlight translates into more sugar being made inside the grape for example rain if you're having a lot of rain uh, happening on one side and not so much rain happening on the other it will affect the flavor on the nutrition in the soil even the wind or if you're on a hill you get maybe a lot of sunlight lot not enough sunlight if you're on a flat land you get uh, lots of sunlight uh, even things aspect could be are you close to uh, a river flowing because river will increase the groundwater level so your your roots get a lot of liquid you know a lot of fluids so that affects compared to the same plant growing 5 kilometers away uh, where there's no water availability or less water availability so these are all termed as aspect okay going ahead then viticultural practices affect your grape growing now viticultural act as, uh, activities means how the farmer grows the grapes now this viticulture activity could be an example could be uh, that i use a lot of machines uh, in my vineyard for taking out my grapes from the plant compared to you who uses manual labor with you know they have a scissor in their hand and they manually go and pluck the grape bunches now uh, we may be in the same area you may be my neighbor but because i use more machines and you use more manual labor our product may taste different that's because for example a machine if there's a machine which rolls over these plants and slaps the plant and all the grapes drop the machine is doesn't know which bunch is good which bunch is still raw or sour uh, the machine doesn't know one bunch could be rotten another bunch uh, is perfect so machine will take everything so my product quality uh, may be lower i may be faster than you but the quality may come out lower compared to you which uses manual labor it will be more expensive because you have to pay salary for so many people but these people will use their intellect they will look at a bunch and say oh this looks 
slightly raw. I don't want this bunch. Let me take this bunch and then they'll pluck it. So it's much more slower, but your quality level may be higher. So viticultural practices matter a lot. Even things like uh, some farmers would use animal compost. Another farmer may use fertilizers. So they will affect the flavor of your product and the quality of your product. Now again, vit vinification is the process of making a wine. So if you're using vinification uh, in different styles, if you're using different equipment compared to me, our product, even if it's the same product from the same part of the world, will taste different. Let's say I use wooden barrels for fermentation. You use metal barrels. Or uh, you use a cement barrel. Our product may have different flavors developing. Let's say I, I use stem crushers and you do it uh, manually. Or let's say my crushing is done by a machine and you use human beings who are standing on top of the grapes and crushing with their feet. It will produce a slightly different product. Let's say I, I age my product for a few months, but you, after you make, you just bottle it and you sell it. So the whole process of vinification will produce different kind of flavors. And of course, vintage, I told you about aspect. So every year the aspect changes. Some year there is more sunlight, some year there's more rainfall. Some year was a bad year because there was too much pollution. So all these things are affecting the grapes. So every year your wine will have a different flavor. From the same field, the same variety of fruit you are growing, the same brand name you are making, but it may taste different. So these are all things which affect your grape. So now let's quickly look at the different parts of the grape. Now you know the fermentation steps already, so uh, you'll understand this better. Now this is the part which is mostly used for making your wine, which is called the pulp. Now pulp is what is made of mostly the sugar and the water and the proteins, whatever is inside the fruit is here. This is what the yeast eats. Now we talked about the natural yeast, uh, natural fermentation of the grapes, if you remember. So the natural yeast is actually present on the skin of the grape. The skin of the grape is the one which has the color. So if you take a red grape, the inside is green or you know white wines. We call it white wines or green wines. It's uh, uh, the pulp is green or white. It's the color on the skin which matters. So the skin gives color. It also gives tannins. Now tannins are basically, uh, you know, imagine when you drink really strong black tea. So you get that dry feeling near your teeth which is uh, or your tongue gets slightly rough. Those are from tannins inside your black tea. So tannins is, is on the skin of the grape. Uh, skin gives color. It also gives the yeast. Now, if you've not seen yeast, maybe when you uh, next time you see a bunch of grapes, you will notice them that they have a white colored powder on top of the skin of the grapes. You can take a skin of the grape and wipe it and then you see it's shiny. So before that, it had a white colored powder. That is actually natural yeast, which is stuck on the outside of the grapes, trying to suck the sugar from inside. So that's the yeast there. The stalk also has tannins, these bitter oils, and the pips or the seeds also have bitter oils and flavors inside. So the same farmer, let's say I crush my grapes so much that all these seeds get crushed. So I'll get a lot of bitter oils in my wine. It will produce a different flavor wine. And let's say when you crush your grapes, you remove the seeds, you don't crush the seeds so much. So your wine will produce a different flavor. So that's just a few things I want to show you. Now, again, how much sugar is inside a, in, in a fruit is measured by something called a refractometer. This is a meter in which it's a machine in which you put a drop of uh, grape juice and then you can through a lens you can see how much sugar is inside here. Okay.
Okay, another thing which you would see in a vineyard is a press. Now this is a sample of a very small press. It's a vertical press. That means you put the juice on top, uh, the grapes on top, and then you screw down the top. And then through the slats in this wood, juice will come out, it will flow in this channel, and it will be collected somewhere. So this is just a sample of a very old vertical press. But the most of the ones which I use in the market are called horizontal presses. These are much more bigger. So you see this is more mechanized. The grapes are growing through a machine. They're falling inside here. They get crushed inside this uh, uh, horizontal press and the juice is falling down inside the big vat. Okay, going ahead. Now the wild yeast. Now look at these. This is just a bunch of fruits or dried grapes on a plant and you see they look purple but this they have this whitish powder they don't shine like grape the grapes which you eat so this is the wild yeast on the outside of the grapes so the only thing we humans do is introduce this grape yeast to the grape juice and how do we do that we the only thing humans do is crush the grapes when we crush the grapes, the juice comes out and the yeast starts, you know, the skin starts floating in the juice and all the yeast goes inside the sugar and it starts fermenting the sugar. Now the name of this yeast is called Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This is again something to remember. This is the same yeast which is used for making your lager beer. So your lager beer also uses this variety of yeast. And, and uh, well, it's usually made for, for uh, stout beer or, you know, beer like Guinness, which are, you know, the stronger in flavor. They use this kind of variety of uh, yeast. So you, I've told you the steps already. The yeast eats the sugar. And after they eat it, they produce alcohol and they produce some gas. Of course, while this reaction is happening, there's also some heat being produced. So when this pro procedure is done, you get a product which is a fermented beverage, which is called a wine. Uh, this is an optional step done in some countries. It's called chaptalization. Uh, this is done if your grape juice are not very sweet. So what the farmer does is they add some extra, you know, sugar inside the grape juice to make it more sweeter so that the yeast has enough food to eat now this is not a common practice especially in famous brands but slightly cheaper brands or countries which are in a very cold area where your grapes do not get really ripe because there's not enough sunlight so they may do chaptalization or enrichment going ahead um, red wine, basically I told you are made from red grapes, but also remember red wine can be made from white grapes also, uh, just to take the juice. Now when it comes to white wine, uh, on the other hand, white wine can be made from both the grapes also. Uh, you take a white grape, you crush it, you ferment it, you get white wine. But if you take a red grape, you crush it, or you remove all the skin and throw it away. You only take the juice, you can also make white wine. Remember the color in the wine comes from the skin of the grape. So during fermentation, if you take out the skin of the red grape juice, the color from the skin will not go inside the wine. So you can make red wine, you can make white wine from red grapes. Just something to remember. And they get the color by doing the pumping over or remontage. It basically means you remove the juice from the bottom and then you put it back on top. You know, the grape skin will be floating on top. So you keep mixing it up so that the more the skins mix with the juice, the more color will turn darker and darker and darker. Now there's something called malolactic fermentation. 
Malolactic fermentation is basically, uh, it happens in some kind of wines uh, where in the malic acid, which is inside the wines, gets converted into lactic acid, which is a softer acid, which is easier for you to digest. Now, this usually happens for wines which are aged for slightly. So if you age wines for a few months, uh, this first reaction where which produces malic acid, which may be slightly you know, stronger, slowly in the wood, it converts into lactic acid. Lactic acid is the same acid which is in milk. So it's a more milder acid which you can digest. So wines, sometimes they will keep the wine in the barrel for a few months to make it softer for you to drink. All right, so uh, this was a very concentrated slide where I, I showed you a lot of things uh, in, in a very uh, concise manner. But again, this is just an introduction to wines. Uh, if you want to learn about wines, uh, we will be, I have done more videos which you can watch. And uh, of course, if you see me face to face in any lectures, you can always ask me questions. Uh, but remember, there's a lot of stuff in libraries. There's a lot of stuff on the internet. So feel free to go on the internet and learn stuff from there. If you have any questions, definitely put it in the comment section. I will answer those questions. Or if you see me face to face, I will answer those questions as well. Uh, remember what I told you, there are lots of places on the internet where you can learn about wines or any alcohols. Just remember, if you get any information from one website, always reconfirm it from two other websites, at least three places. That way you know if at least three places are saying similar things, you know it may be correct. But if you see one website saying something and another website saying exactly the opposite or a different information, then be worried. Check more websites or check published books which are available in the library or always if you are coming for my lectures you can always ask me and I will make sure we clear our doubts and we discuss things which we learn from the internet. So um, this is just a sample of one of the websites which are there and with that I will finish this uh, quick uh, lecture. I hope you learned a little bit about different kind of wines. And I hope to see you in my future classes. All right, then have a nice day, everybody. Bye bye.